Hello, this is Jon Kobold from EMD. In this tutorial, I will show you how you can add realistic looking shadows to uh, objects rendered in a photo montage using SketchUp. So here you can see a photo I have rendered in the WinPro photo montage. I have all the PV panels and the VGG, which is uh, all artificial, but there's no shadows uh, and that is clearly missing. So if you can see, I tick this layer on and off, you can see uh, the shadows is added. Uh, and I have done this using SketchUp and the SketchUp integration module in WinPro. So uh, you can see here uh, behind the panels there are some shadows and uh, you can also see the shadows from the wind turbine on the ground and on the tables over here and a little bit of shadow also here on the top of the VTG. So uh, how to do that? I will just show you right now. So I just close this. and go into WinPro. So <clears throat> now I'm in WinPro and here you see uh, it's a modified version of the sample project I used in the webinar for the SketchUp integration tool in 2022. And uh, you can see I have uh, only a few uh, objects here and uh, I can start opening a photo montage and render it. So here we have it. Uh, I got all the PV panels from these two areas and I have one uh, VTG here. So uh, there's no shadows here, uh, which is uh, normally not the case in uh, photo montage. So now I go into the SketchUp integration module. I have already created a set of exporters that exports pretty much everything we can see down here to SketchUp. So I load SketchUp. So here we have the same project in SketchUp. Uh, as we had in WinPro, and you can see the PV panels and the VTG and the surface and the background uh, image, that's uh, the photomontage image. So, first of all, I would like to do a few steps here that I normally do when I start up uh, SketchUp from WinPro, is that I go and say I don't want to see the edges, I don't want to see the profiles, and I don't want to see uh, the axis, and then also one thing that is important if, if you that's uh, not uh, a project specific uh, thing that is uh, a setting uh, preferences that goes for uh, for this installation of SketchUp, and that is I want to use a maximum texture size. That's important when uh, when working with photo montages like the image here. So uh, here we can actually see uh, the same things as you, as you can see in. In the WinPro photo montage. So, uh, and also here now we don't have the shadows, but but you can show the shadows in, in SketchUp by apply, uh, pressing this button. You can see I turn on and off the shadows, and it is pretty much changes uh, the whole light settings because now when I turn on the shadows, uh, the, the the light position is taken from the sun position at the given time that I'm setting down here. So, so now I can change the date and the time using these sliders down here, just enter the values I want. So now I'm just uh, moving it to uh, to the wanted time for, uh, for this demonstration. So here now I can see, I can see some shadows on the ground, I can see some shadows on the, on the panels, and I can see uh, the BTG both on the surface over here and also on the panels, and there's also some shadows on the VTG itself. So, how do I get all these uh, nice shadows into my photo montage that I have here? Because uh, the rendered image here is, is hard to see here, but it's, it's quite a nicer rendering that I have here in, uh, in SketchUp. I could use a a 3D renderer uh, in SketchUp if I wanted to uh, and perhaps get a, a, a very fine result. Uh, I'll, I'll look into that uh, in a later tutorial. But for now, I just want to get the shadows back in, in photo montage and nothing else. So now I'll show you how I can do this. So I first I copy uh, this rendered image here that is missing the shadows. I copy that to the clipboard and then I go to 
at Photoshop and I create a new image and I use the clipboard size and I control V paste in the image here. So now you can see that it actually looks uh, quite nice. It looks a little bit better than it shows here. And that is because uh, when it's, the zoom is set to 29% here in the photo montage, it, it doesn't represent the image uh, so, so nicely here in this view, but it is actually quite nice. So, uh, then I go to SketchUp. Uh, I happen to know that this image is uh, 4000 pixel high and 6000 pixel wide. I go to uh, SketchUp and I export this uh, image as I have it here to a JPEG. So export a 2D graphic and then I save it with the name Shadow because it has shadows on it. And then I go into the options, this is important, and I set the height to these 4000 pixels as I knew the height was in the original image. I say OK and I say export. And I, I this is uh, from preparing this, I create these two uh, files, I'll just overwrite those. First the shadows one, and perhaps you could guess that I now want to create a version without shadows. And that's what I will do. Now I uh, select all, I go to uh, se uh, edit select all here, control A. And as you can see, uh, some of the, uh, the items here has a red marking, that means they are locked. So I just need to unlock them first. I click and right click and I say unlock and I do the same thing with the surface. And then I can go into uh, the select all. And here in the entity info, I can set that I don't want uh, any of the selected items to receive shadows. And there you can see the shadows went away. So now I have exactly the same image, just without shadows. And I export that front as well. So no shadows. And I'm replacing that. So. Now I actually got what I want from uh, SketchUp. I got an image with shadows and one without shadows. And here I have the rendered image from uh, the photo montage. So now open from in here, these ones. First open the, I can actually move to select and say open. So now I have them all here in uh, Photoshop and uh, now I can do the rest in here. So I take uh, the one with shadows, and I say select all, control A, and then I use control C to copy, and then I go back here, and I use control V to paste this as a new layer. As you can see, the layer is not right on top of the other one, but I can uh, use this uh, drag tool and then I drag it to the left until it uh, snaps here. You can see right here, it's, it's got this cross. That means I got it uh, correctly centered. So now I have the one with the shadows on the top of the original image. And now I take the one without shadows, Control A, Control C, and Control V. This one also needs to be moved. like this. So now I have them all stacked here together. I don't actually need the background, so I just delete that one. So the trick is now I select the top layer and I said the blending mode should be difference. So now you can see everything that is black is because it's ex exactly the same. And uh, this I can select using this magic wand tool. And the, the settings up here is quite important. Uh, I don't want to use anti-aliasing. I want it, don't want it to be contiguous, but I want to sample all layers. Tolerance in 5 is a good uh, uh, starting point. Uh, I, it normally works well. So I click out here. And since I actually want to select where there are shadow and not, as I did now, where there is no shadows, I will invert the selecting. 
I'll inverse it. Right, and now I've actually done these two layers out here. I'll just delete them because I have the selection that is where the shadows should be. And uh, what I do now is I create a new layer and then I use this function called fill, shift F5, then I fill it with black. That, that since I have selection going on here, it's filling the selected areas with black. Good, now I'm done with the selection. So I just go and say deselect like this. So now I have some really, really dark uh, uh, shadows on this layer here. And I've, obviously they are too black, but you, I can adjust opacity of this layer to make it look as I want it to look. So already now you can see it looks uh, really uh, good. The shadows up here are following the terrain really nicely and go into the, the panels over here. There are some odd shadows down here in the foreground that I believe comes from the elevation model that is going up here right in front of the camera and I don't want those. So I'll just start to make it real black and then I'll delete the areas that I don't want. There's also some strange things here that I don't like or at this spot here and this over here. So I just use the selection tool and I'll just go and say I don't want this. Press delete. And I don't want this. Press delete. And then I say I don't want this. And then I deselect Control D. and change the opacity down to something more uh, nice than uh, completely black. So now we are almost there. This is uh, almost what I showed uh, to start with. There might be a little... Uh, they are still very hard, uh, hard line. You, you can see the line here is very hard and down on the ground. It's, does not look quite realistic that the, the shadows are so harsh as this. So uh, also here the VHD looks really strange that uh, the shadows should look like this. But uh, I can change that. Uh, now I still have this layer selected. I can go into the filter menu and blur the shadows using this. Uh, there's a lot of different blurs uh, that you can use. I like to use this Gaussian blur. And here you can see already it's having a preview showing uh, how the shadow looks with a certain uh, radio, pixel radio of, of blur. And you can try and change it to, to, to see what you, you prefer. Like, like this, uh, you can see very clearly where the shadow goes from the VTG. And you can uh, make it go off a lot like this. And then it's, it's, it's obviously more blurred than else. This is a matter of, of judgment, really, from your side, how to, uh, to put it exactly. Uh, I think when you have it here around 20, it looks good, uh, but it's, it's hard to, to tell. Uh, that's not uh, an exactly correct way to do it. I, I don't think so, but uh, also, I would just say okay, and, and this is actually what we call a destructive uh, effect because you cannot, uh, of course, you can you can use undo, but it, it's not like you uh, later on after doing a, a lot of other things can change this uh, back the blur you just applied. So you kind of stick to it after you have added it. So when you can, uh, the, the blur radius and this opacity are the two settings that you can adjust to to make your shadows look realistic. So that was pretty much it. Uh, I'm planning to do a tutorial on different render engines that you can use directly in SketchUp where you perhaps can do this a little smarter and easier and uh, also add other objects and plants and things. Uh, perhaps uh, if I find the time, I'll do that. Uh, subscribe for our YouTube channel and you'll get notified. Thank you for watching.